Good morning, welcome back to the channel. This is a short video on um, why you use pilot holes when you're fixing two pieces of timber together. This uh, video has come about because of the uh, chipboard flooring series or chipboard fixing in the loft conversion series, should I say, which I think is episode eight, I think, eight or nine. Um, and we, what I tried to explain was with the use of these spack screws, I'll put a picture on the, uh, on the screen now because you can't see it very well. And this is how these are designed to not have to pile at all because of the thread at the bottom, the little space in the middle of window thread, and then the reverse thread at the top. But if you want to see more about that one, I explained it in the, uh, the chipboard video. So head over to the channel and have a look at that. It's the chipboard flooring loft from version series. So what I'm going to do now, this is why I'm doing it. And if this is the, this is the reason why, um, all I'm going to do is just, I know it's a smaller piece of timber, and I know it's a bigger screw, but I want to emphasize the fact that this is why you do part of tolls. No pilot toll. And yes, I'm gonna say it again. I know this is a small piece of tent to fix it, but that's that's the reason why. Because and why it happens is because there's no not enough space in the grain of the timber for the thread of this screw to, to pass through it without trying to force its way in. Whereas if you were to I have to split this open now. Whereas if you were to get a, a pilot hole first, in order to stop it splitting, what you have to do, and I've just got these two sort of sets that I've always got with me, is what you want to achieve in, on in your top piece of timber, not your bottom piece that you're fixing to, is if you get a, a drill bit like this and have a look at your have a look at your drill bit and make sure that the drill bit is wider than the threads of your screw, like that. So you can just you can't see the threads there hardly. So if you can see it on the film there, if you can. Can you see that all right? Okay, so if you were to put this in first, and again, this is an example, same little piece of wood, just trying to exaggerate more if you like. So take that away from what you fix it into, because if you, you don't want to go into this one. And then when you put your screw in this time, because it's not gonna, it's not gonna bite on the wood so much, it, it shouldn't split it, <laughs> here we go. So, It started to go a little bit, but um, I could have probably gone one size up actually on that. But that's that's why, that's the reason why you do it. If you're doing joinery side of things more, this is more applicable. Um, when you're just smashing two pieces of 4x2 together in framing, maybe not. However, another reason we'll want to do this, this video, was to sort of show, um, and I'm gonna try and show it on this. I don't know how much it'll, uh, it'll show it, but. I'll, tr I'll have a look. So let's say you want to join this 4 by 2 and this 2 by 2 together. There's no part at all because you, you're framing. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm happy that I'm not going to split this piece of wood. I'm happy because it's a 2 by 2 It's a big enough screw and it should be tantalised, which means it makes it a bit stronger anyway. But um, So if I put this screw into there, what I want to show is, is what, what happens with regards to fixing two pieces of wood together, not the splitting in this instance now. And what does happen, and I hope you can see it on the camera in a minute, is when this screw comes through here, it'll touch this piece of timber and it'll lift, exaggerate, it'll lift this one up like that. And then when you go down, what happens is it bites into this timber, it bites into this timber, but leaves a gap in between the two pieces. So it sort of rocks, so therefore it's not a great fixing. So if I just show that now, and hopefully it'll, it'll, uh, it'll do it. So if I hold that tight, that lift a little bit that's all the way in now as if I wanted it lifted but can you see that what's happened is is that's not fixed properly at all and even if I did it again see that's gone further into the timber now if you have a look at that that's gone further than I would do normally because the further you go into your timber the less strength you've got because now I'm biting into that much timber as opposed to this much so but if you can see that it's still rocking and that's because there's a gap now because I've tried to force this into that one the threads are sticking in this and the threads are sticking in that. That's the reason why. So, okay. What I'll do now is, I've got my big, big screw again. And then this, this big drill bit here. Oh, that's a bit warm, that screw. Weird, that, isn't it? This drill bit I've got is, I don't mean to laugh at me when I've hurt myself. Um, so, so this big drill bit now, I'll, put, I'll swap that with a little smaller one another piece prepared and everything so if I just put that in there like that now I'll put that in there like 
put my pilot hole in, big pilot hole. And I don't need to do, use a countersink because this is, we're going to say this is a bit of two by two framing, you know, or you're making something that's going to be on view, a bit like behind me, there's a there's a wooden structure that's doesn't need to be drawn in quality, but it needs to look nice still. That's the only reason I'm doing it this way. So now, if I were to put this in there, that screw lock, oh, give or take a little tiny bit, it will drop through there. It's quite loose now, that is. You can sort of see it's not, not quite binding there, if I give it a bit of rattle. So what, that, what you should recognise now is the fact that it won't lift up. So if I hide that tight again, so that's pushed straight the way through without any movement at all on the, on the drill. I'll put that in there now, and there's no, there's no wobble on that now at all, because the threads aren't now biting on this one. They're only biting in this one. So therefore, the clamping pressure of the screw is now 100% as opposed to 75% before, because it was trying to grip two separate pieces of wood together, leaving a gap. So that's a lot better. And of course then, if you were to put another one in, it'd be even stronger. However, you could probably now get away with not pilot holding your second one, because that's already clamped it. So you could put another screw in there, and that'd solve it. So that's basically what I wanted trying to uh, trying to show you, but if I just do, just do another one, just an example. Swap this over again just get a I mean this is just a, a drywall screw now so I can't see this splitting it at all but uh, this should be fine but uh, this the thing is you never really know with with this kind of thing if I was fixing this I wouldn't risk it because there is a risk that that could split it if I didn't want it to split that's why I part it all so I'll try this one see that's worked fine and that's fixed no, no problem at all it's a smaller piece of timber no problem but it's just a risk that you wouldn't want to take. If this, if you, if you wanted that to be your finish, you wouldn't want to risk it because it'd split it. Um, and that's the reason why, and the reason why you do it. This is for the strength. And this one, if this is just a bit of battening, oh, you did a bit of fencing. Say you wanted to screw the feather edge behind me, and you hadn't got a nailer. If you wanted to screw it, you'd have to pile up that because that would definitely split 100%. And even in the middle of the board, you'd still get some splitting either side of it. And of course. With a tantalise, it could get a bit of water in it and what have you, so it's best not to. So that's why you pilot hole. One last quick last thing is, well, that's with regards when you're gonna use these kind of countersinks that actually countersink the heading. Um, and this is more for aesthetics, more than anything else. Because if you look at this one down here, in this timber, <laughs> you're meant to be, put when I'm pointing, see no, that, I'm that's there, that's what quite ragged there. But if you were to put, a screw in with this first. I do a little count so it counter sinks the head look. And then you were to put this one in again, same screw, like that. And then just aim to finish it level with the top. That looks a lot neater than that one. That's why you'd use these for, for more of a nicer finish. And again, if this was a visual, yes it's tantalised, but if it's gonna be visual, that's why you do that. The last example I'm going to show you is, let's say for argument's sake, because I haven't got any melon wine, so don't use it, only when we get kitchens. Let's just say this is two cabinets together. I'm going to fix them together. So what you want to do, let's say this is the front now. This is where the doors are going to sit, and this is your front of your cabinet. So you've got two, two cabinets together, and this is going to be your front. Now, if you were to get a screw, just use this one, because it's quite aggressive. If you were to use that in there without pilot, this is going to be too big, so this is just an example. Can you see how it pulled it apart? Now that exaggerates it even more, that bit now, right? Why you should do it. So, in terms of piloting, this is a finish now. This is going to be finished and you'd make a right mess there. So, um, all you do is, I'll just put this in there first. So you want to put these together and what you want is, especially in your kitchens, you want this to be nice and tight. You want it to be flush at the front and nice and tight. So if you get your pilot hole and make sure it's the, sorry, go back a little bit. You've got to make sure this instance now that this, because you're pilot holding with a countersink, is the same width as the shank on your screw, not the threads this time. What's funny about the word shank? You're allowed to say shank on the channel. So, so in this instance, all you do, Let's say this is your finish, and again, this is why you use a countersink, because you want your flush to finish nice and tidy. You pull your drill in and out, keep them clamped. I normally put a clamp on it anyway, but... So, you set your countersink like that. You put your screw in. 
and then when you, this time, if you notice, it's not pulling it apart. And ignore that, it's just because I've got a bigger screw to hand. But this time, that's gone in a bit further, I'd like, but finish is nice and tidy and it's clamped it together because I've put a pilot hole in. And all the only reason it's worked this time, even though it's not bigger on this one, is because I've piled it both timber, the same width as the thread, so there's no extra force forcing it apart, like when I put the screen without the pilot. So, I hope that's uh, answered the questions you might have on pilot holding. You might only be the third person to watch this in 12 months, I don't know. People might not like it. Um, if you do like it and you want to see other little hints and tips that come across, what that I tend to find when we're doing other jobs we do, we tend to think, well, that might be a good idea, but then we don't get around to doing it. But uh, I hope this has been beneficial to somebody. So, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget that like button and the notification bell ready for the next episode, which at the moment is the loft conversion series. We've got 70 odd videos on our channel now and shorts as well. So why don't you head over and take a look at one of them. We've got about four or five videos in front of ourselves now with the loft. So there's plenty coming, two to three videos a week. So uh, hopefully if you like this one and you like the content, you might want to subscribe. Thanks very much. Thank you.